Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Sean Almer. I'm the executive director here at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. And as many of you know, the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art is fortunate to have the world's largest collection of works by Grant Wood. And a portion of that collection is always on view here at the museum. But right now uh, is a wonderful time to come by the museum because in addition to our one gallery permanent installation of Grant Wood's works, um, we have three temporary exhibitions up. Um, Grant Wood Revealed, uh, Rarely Seen Works by an American Master is on view until September 5th. Um, that is a five gallery exhibition um, that um, brings out many things that are rarely seen um, by the public and gives a much fuller view of Grant Wood's uh, art and life. Um, that is joined by Seriously Funny, uh, American Gothic Parodies, which looks at the le lasting legacy of Grant Wood's most famous painting, American Gothic, that's on view. Um, uh, until August 22nd. And then Americans in Paris, uh, Grant Wood and Marvin Cohn's 1920 trip to Paris um, is a two gallery exhibition um, that looks at that wonderful summer in 1920 where Grant Wood and his best friend Marvin Cohn uh, went to Paris, saw the sites, painted en plein air, um, and brought back many of their uh, works um, that have now, um, many of which have now ended up in our collection. And it really is a wonderful uh, snapshot of a particular moment in time. Uh, as uh, many of you also know, we own and operate um, the Grant Wood Studio, uh, three short blocks away from the museum building it is where Grant Wood lived and worked from 1924 uh, through 1935, um, when he moved to Iowa City uh, into 1142 East Court Street, uh, which is the topic for today's presentation. Uh, we will be screening the documentary on 1142 and afterwards the current owner of 1142, Jim Hayes, um, will be happy to answer uh, some of your questions. Um, it is really a wonderful documentary uh, and uh, it is a rare opportunity to see it. So I'm glad um, that uh, Jim and uh, the foundation of the University of Iowa uh, allowed us to screen it for you today. But before um, I actually do that screening, I do want to thank um, our sponsors for the exhibitions and the educational programming that accompanies them, this presentation being a part of that. Um, these exhibitions uh, and the educational programming have been made possible um, by the Henry Luce Foundation, the McIntyre Foundation, the Esther and Robert Armstrong Charitable Trust, Collins Aerospace, CRST International, and Great America Financial Services, the last two being donor advised funds of the Greater Cedar Rapids Community Foundation. Additional annual support um, for the museum has been provided by the Iowa Arts Council, which is a division of the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts. Funds for the Community 2020 of the Greater Cedar Rapids Community Foundation members of the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art and contributors to the museum's annual fund. And our annual educational programming has been supported in part by Transamerica. Our thanks to all of these uh, companies, foundations, and individuals who helped to make uh, these exhibitions and educational programming possible. At this time, I'm going to share my screen and we'll go ahead and start the film. Find it here. Not finding here. Oops. Hang on just a second. Give me just a moment here. Okay, let's see. Let's try this again. Can everyone see the screen? Can everyone see the film? Nod if you can. Can you see the film playing? Thank you. 
Welcome to 1142. I'm Jim Hayes, and I'm the owner of 1142. The house is a great container of history. Nicholas Oakes and his wife Mary came to Iowa City in 1855. He designed and built 1142 over the course of three years and finished in 1858. In finishing the house, he created the label over the front door of the house, Ed Oaks, 1858. The Oaks family lived here into the early 1900s and Grant Wood bought the property in 1935. Dr. Pauline Moore and her husband, Ed Builder, bought the property from Grant Wood's estate in 1942. And uh, I bought 1142 uh, from Dr. Moore in uh, 1975. Now let's just take a little tour of the grounds and the house. When Grant Wood bought the property in 1935, uh, he designed and built this uh, beautiful fence the arrowhead pickets are all attached to heavy scrap iron cross pieces. Directly in front of me is this uh, gate that Grant Wood designed. He designed this gate handle so that he could come into the gate with uh, groceries in his arms and pull on the handle with his uh, arm and open the gate. So that's just one more attention to detail. He's got a little uh, cast iron weight that that pulls the gate shut. It's on a chain over here. Just wonderful, wonderful attention to detail. And then along the um, West Grant Wood designed and built that beautiful stone wall. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And next to the wall, the remaining upright euonymus that Grant Wood planted in 1935. Mm -hmm. First thing that you see at the front of the house is a very welcoming front door that actually Grant Wood designed. Likely in the original house, the front door was a divided French door, and the house would not have had the side lights uh, which Grant Wood designed uh, with this classic look that he thought was more appropriate to the front of the house. He also designed the paneling within the front doorway. Over the front door, you see some beautiful diamond uh, point design in the woodwork. The glass fan over the doorway was always a part of the front door and 1142 uh, was always applied in the gold leaf in that fan. You see the original uh, shutters on the house and in the summertime in the old house, the shutters would have been closed all the way around the house to help keep the house cool. The Oaks house had a, a front porch that went the width of the front of the house. And it was a beautiful front porch. It was, again, of this very uh, Italianate design with the pedicles and the, the various trim and the porch posts. Uh, but Grant Wood wanted to see the classic lines, the Italianate lines of the house. And so he took the front porch off and he redesigned the front doorway as you see it uh, today. And you see the louvered. Uh, shutters and the louvered front uh, door. And you see those nice, classic, clean lines in his very famous oil, Parson Weems Fable, which was done here on the property. And he also designed the limestone front step, which leads down to the broad limestone front walk to the front gate. Again, his design, as well as the limestone path that goes to the back of the house. Another point that you see as we go upward on the wall of the front of the house uh, are the red cast iron stars, again seen in Parson Weems' fable. The stars are functional as well as decorative. They anchor iron rods which go through the house and help support the, the brick structure. Uh, further up on the roof line of the house, you see the really beautiful Italianate design with the uh, pendants, the acorn pendants reminiscent of the Oaks family. The design at the roof line is a little uh, more heavy in proportion than most of the Italianate that you see. And that is uh, very much by uh, Nicholas Oaks design. A uh, really awesome feature of 1142 is this big white pine tree, which has been here 
uh, for a long, long time. Uh, Leon Livers, the great horticulturist tree guy here in Iowa City, says that as of this time, this tree is well over 200 years old. So it was, it was young at the time that the house was built, but it's still here. It's healthy. It's beautiful. The tree is, is so tall now that we have installed a lightning rod at the top of the tree uh, to avoid uh, lightning strikes that might, that might kill the white pine. As a companion to the white pine in the front yard is another uh, very old tree, a Norway spruce. Uh, Leon thinks that that tree is not quite as old as a white pine, but uh, may very well have been on the property when, when uh, Nicholas Oakes and Mary uh, built the house in 1855 through 1858. Likely, one of the first things you notice as we walk from the uh, front yard to the back of the house is this terracing that's been here from the original house uh, nicholas oaks terrace from way off to the west all through this property and, and down to the east when gretchen hartbarger was landscaping and designing in 1979 and 1980 uh, she made a special point of wanting to separate the more formal front yard from the less formal backyard and she separated these by designing a replication of the Grant Wood fencing. First thing you see inside the gate is this uh, nice old yard light that Grant Wood designed. Then as we walk along, you'll notice that the limestone uh, turns into these formed concrete pads. This was another personal touch of Grant Wood. Down on the lower lawn, he sketched the 1940 oil painting that he did called Spring in Town. And he was sketching a young fellow uh, digging in the dirt. That area later became uh, the daylily bed that Grant Wood planted, uh, which is down here and dug into the uh, terrace. The daylilies that are here include some of the daylilies that Grant Wood planted in 1940. Probably the best thing that I ever did since moving into the house was to build a swimming pool. The pool was designed by Gretchen Harshbarger in 1979 and installed in 1980. This was her last project and she did a beautiful job of incorporating uh, the swimming pool into the existing landscaping. Uh, behind me is the magnolia tree uh, that Dr. Steinler, Arthur Steinler, the famous orthopedist, uh, gifted to uh, Pauline Moore and Ed Miller when they bought the house from the Grant Wood Estate. And it has grown through the years and has flourished through the years. It blooms every April, uh, these beautiful pink and white blossoms. When Nan Wood Graham uh, visited here in 1976, uh, she told me a really interesting story. She said that her brother Grant had always planned to do a reflecting pool uh, down in this portion of the yard, and it was going to be rimmed with uh, clamshells that were going to be sculpted out of uh, limestone. The one clamshell which he finished, uh, you will see in the garden house, but uh, at the time I was redoing the kitchen in 1993, we're taking wainscoting off the walls. We got the wainscoting down to the horsehair plaster walls. And uh, here was a pencil sketch put there by Grant Wood of the reflecting pool, which Nan had talked about with where the clamshells were going to be, uh, the dimensions, uh, the total look. He had little telephone numbers written for various uh, workers. It confirmed the story that uh, Nan had, had talked about in, in placement of the reflecting pool where the swimming pool is now found. This side of the pool is really the heart and soul of the pool down by the umbrella table where most people gather. 
at this end of the pool, you see the rock garden that was designed and built by Grant Wood into the landscaping of the original Oaks property. The pergola was designed by uh, Fred Habrecht, who had been a basketball player at the University of Iowa, and uh, he later became a landscape architect. When Fred and I were designing the pergola, uh, we wanted to pick up the grid work uh, design that you see on the screen porch, which is a Grant Wood uh, design. You see the trumpet vines, which uh, Grant Wood planted in 1935, still blooming. I moved into the carriage house where we're standing in the fall of 1972. I rented from Dr. Bohr and her husband, uh, Ed Milner, and lived here for three years before I moved into 1142 after I purchased the house. The carriage house is the original barn that was built uh, with uh, 1142 itself. Uh, during the time that the Oaks family lived here, uh, the barn served as a barn, a horse barn, and where we're standing was a hay loft. Uh, when Grant Wood bought the property, uh, he used the hay loft space as storage space for his art materials and also uh, as a studio from time to time. Uh, when Dr. Moore and, and Ed bought the property, uh, they maintained all of the materials that Wood had left here. Uh, and then there was a fire in the, in the 50s. So really uh, priceless materials uh, were lost at that time. After that fire, uh, Dr. Moore and Ed uh, converted the upstairs to a, a play space for the children. And that's when they did the 90 pine that you see. And, and then later on, uh, they rented the space to students. And behind me, you'll see a, a print uh, from Ireland uh, that I bought in 1964. That was one of my very first pieces. Uh, below that Irish print is the great chest that was designed and built by Grant Wood. And uh, you'll see pictures of this chest. And when you see pictures of Five Turner Alley in Cedar Rapids, Grant Wood uh, built the chest for that space when he and his mother uh, lived at Five Turner Alley. As we stand here at the top of the pool, you will see the yard light that Grant Wood designed really anchors this part of the yard of 1142. Wood wanted some additional height to the lamppost, so he extended the height of the lamppost by adding a table leg to the top. And then on top of the table leg that he designed and uh, created the beautiful lantern that sits atop the post. For decorative purposes, uh, he designed uh, little ears that, uh, that stick up at each of the four corners and then a finial at the top uh, of the lantern. Uh, we're going to walk up to the upper lawn of the 1142 now, but, but before we do that, just a moment to uh, look at this entrance to the upper lawn. When Grant Wood uh, moved in in 1935, uh, he found that this terrace north to south uh, was starting to disintegrate, so he designed and built himself, built the, the limestone wall, limestone from a stone city, of course. In 1997, uh, Bill Novish, who had designed the, the conservatory, designed this beautifully arched uh, entranceway or stepway up to the upper lawn. Garden House is the old Virginia green that you see uh, on the shutters and the windows and the picket fence uh, by Gretchen Harshbarger recommendation. Behind me, you see the rabbit wire lattice work that Grant Wood uh, used in his living room window, and he planted ivy in this design so that it would uh, form a sort of a living sculpture uh, in the living room. As you walked into the garden house, you were walking across uh, recycled bricks uh, that I placed down here when I opened the garden house. And many of the bricks are taken from the old Oaks uh, brick factory. This garden house space is my half of 
the original 1910 garage that belonged to the uh, Oaks brothers when they lived side by side. Uh, on the walls, you'll see shelving, which was uh, designed and made by Dent Wood. To my left, uh, you'll see this little coffin, uh, and you'll see the original the Grant Wood design and built yard light. We exactly replicated the yard light in 2011. We found that it was deteriorating, and so I received advice that we should not attempt to uh, repair it or replace pieces, uh, but much as they do with Frank Lloyd Wright uh, architectural details, they exactly replicate and then store the original parts. And that's what we wanted to do here. Uh, the last uh, feature in the garden house that you'll want to take a look at uh, is the stone sculpting done by Grant Wood. We talked about that earlier, uh, the reflecting pool and, and his intent to rim the reflecting pool with uh, the stone clamshells. And he was only able to get one of the clamshells completed and that's <laughs> displayed here on the Clariolian table. When uh, Nicholas Oakes was landscaping the area surrounding 1142, he started up west of the property, maybe two or three houses to the west at this time, and terrace down past 1142 to the east. It made for a beautiful landscaping, of course. He also did a very interesting thing, a very useful and functional thing. On each of the terraces, he dug a cistern uh, for a water supply. The master cistern, or as I call it, the mother of all cisterns, is at the eastern edge of the porch of 1142. In 2000, I started thinking that I would like to have a sculpture fountain on the Western lawn. And so I asked my nephew, James Sayers, who is a sculptor in Bray, Ireland, uh, to come up with a design for a sculpture fountain. And so in conjunction with architect uh, Bill Novish, uh, we designed this beautiful limestone surround and James uh, designed the family figure, a mother and a father in a very protective setting over their little child uh, who's playing with a ball in the water. The water is recycled from one of the Nicholas Oakes sisters. Bill designed this in such a way that the whole fountain structure sits atop, uh, I think 10 or 12 uh, concrete pylons that go down into the ground and a platform sits on those pylons so that we would not disturb the old cistern from uh, the original property. When Grant Wood designed and built the limestone wall, he designed and built this gate as well uh, because he liked to play cards with uh, John Oaks next door. So he wanted to have easy and immediate access instead of walking all the way around the house. And so he incorporated once again, uh, the arrowhead pick design that he had used in the uh, front fence. And he also uh, designed and, and made uh, the same kind of uh, lever handle that he used on the front gate. He also um, used a little whimsy, a little fun, I think with the design, the little curly cue on the uh, handle. And uh, again, you see the little pointed ears uh, that he incorporated uh, into the lantern of the lamppost. From the, this vantage point, we get a great view of the west side of 1142. Uh, to my right, uh, you see a doorway that Grant Wood designed and built. Uh, behind that doorway, when he lived here, uh, he stored his art materials, his stones, his easels, uh, different things that he used in, in his lithography and in stone sculpting. Uh, that storage area was down under the stairway, the back stairway that came down from the second floor. Uh, when I decided to put the conservatory on in 1997, uh, that stairway had to go in, in order to make room for the conservatory. But I wanted to retain 
the essence of the of the look and of the doorway. Uh, it's a dummy door uh, right now because it's simply attached to the wall. Uh, there's no storage there behind it, but we wanted to keep that beautifully designed Brantwood feature. We've walked on the grounds of 1142 uh, to the north side of the property on Burlington Street to the Grantwood Art Colony. So about three years ago, I collaborated with the University of Iowa uh, to make this an artist enclave uh, in these four red houses. And these students of the arts live in these houses and, and work here and paint here. Uh, the university provides a stipend and their living accommodation as well as studio space. It's our intent and wish uh, that the fellows of the program will live and, and work here in their area of arts and uh, carry Grant Wood's legacy and vision out to the United States and internationally. Stepping in from the outside, we first walk into the main porch of the house, which wraps around the kitchen and the dining room area. This beautiful porch is original to the Oaks house. It was not screened as it is now during the Oaks years. When Grant Wood bought the house, he decided to screen in the porch, make it more usable. And he also, for decorative purposes, designed and built the beautiful grid work that you see from ceiling down to the floor. He had previously used the grid work in homes that he had designed and built in the Kenwood area in Cedar Rapids. He also used the grid work design on his sketches for his oil painting. Behind me is a bench, a storage bench that Grant Wood designed uh, when he came to storage for overshoes, that sort of thing. Uh, in the original house, the Oaks house, there was a hand pump here that stood over uh, the mother of all cisterns. The cistern is 10 feet wide and 30 feet deep, still has uh, water which uh, comes in from the groundwater during rains. It was used for, for watering plants and trees, uh, and, and perhaps in the old days uh, for laundry. Uh, Grant Wood decided to upgrade the, the pump on the cistern here, and so he replaced the pump handle with an old uh, pump out of a service station. It's still a working pump. Uh, however, uh, I've removed the chain just for safety uh, purposes. So looking above uh, in the porch, You'll see the ceiling, uh, which is a Grant Wood design, and incorporates again the paneling idea of the concept. And really, a fun thing, a whimsical thing on his part, is that the diamonds and the panels are increasing in size. So that if you stand at the south end of the porch, uh, the diamonds and the panels uh, appear to be equal in size. One of the really most interesting uh, pieces in the house was added by Grant Wood in 1935, and that's this long uh, table which stretches between the two main posts of the porch. And the table is in two parts and lifts up, and there are iron legs that, that Grant Wood designed to slip out under the table to, to prop it up and support it. But he covered the, the table with masonite, of course, with the masonite which he used in his painting, the masonite which he would have used on the ceiling in the porch, uh, Wood was a, a great entertainer, very inclusive guy, and brought a lot of people through the house. And one of the really cool pictures is of Grant Wood and Carl Sandburg sitting at, at this end of the table. You'll see that picture in the billiards room. In 1998, um, I added the conservatory to the main house. Uh, this is the first and only major room added to the original 1858 house. But the conservatory was designed by architect Bill Novish. You'll notice the arching in the windows. Uh, the windows are in great proportion to the rest of the house and to the windows in the house. Uh, he picked up the detail of the original columns uh, from the screen porch on the side of the kitchen and dining room. Another architectural detail that you might enjoy um, are the panels under the window 
course, and these panels incorporate the architecture of the windows that you see in the living room and the billiards room uh, and are quite uh, beautiful as well. Above is a Waterford crystal chandelier, and that's important to me because my mother's family, the Morrissey family, uh, was from County Waterford in Ireland. Behind me, the door to the half bath is a is a exact replica or match uh, to the door that Grant Wood built just around the corner and would have been a door on the staircase that came down into the backyard. Uh, kind of an interesting thing that we found when we were matching and copying the outside door. And you'll remember that Grant Wood <laughs> painted all of his oils on masonite. When we got down uh, to matching the this hardware, uh, for the uh, hinges, we found that the the this part of the hinge and the strap metal, supposedly strap metal, on the outside door was actually masonite and had weathered from 1935 to 1998 just fine and is still on the door on the outside. Inside the half bath, you'll see copper fixtures, uh, hand hammered sink, and I wanted to. Uh, follow up on the theme of, of uh, Grant Wood's hand hammered copper hood over the fireplace in the living room. And so I had a, a copper smith, a metal worker from the School of Art and Art History at the University of Iowa come and he uh, made this copper uh, sink and the materials in the half bath. He also did the, uh, the chimney toppers on the outside. Uh, the last for the for the uh, half bath door, uh, we found in an old barn uh, southwest of Iowa City. The uh, floors in the kitchen are yellow southern pine, and they're original to the house, as are most all the floors in the house. Uh, the floors are in really great condition considering that uh, they're well over 150 years old at this time. Grant Wood first created lithography after his move to Iowa City in 1935. He had never done lithographs before that time. In 1938, the Associated American Artists had commissioned Grant Wood to create uh, wildflowers, tame flowers, fruits and vegetables, uh, which you see here in the kitchen. And so these pieces, these four pieces, uh, were sold for six dollars and fifty cents a piece in, in 1938. Wood and his sister Nan and her husband uh, hand colored 250 of each of these pieces. Grant Wood taught them how to uh, color these lithographs, and some of that work was done right here at the kitchen table. Uh, which was under the big window on the east side of the kitchen. Uh, to my right is a nice pencil sketch, uh, which was done by Grant Wood. And at the time that Grant Wood died, uh, he left a portfolio of 85 pieces of artwork in uh, his closet in his bedroom. It was uh, left in that same closet until in 1976 when Manwood Graham came to visit and I took the portfolio out and laid the pictures out on one of the beds upstairs and after dinner I took Dan upstairs and asked her if she recognized anything of importance in this portfolio and she made her way through each of the 85 pictures and, and the first thing she came to was this pencil sketch of figures and she was very excited and she said, oh, Jim, this is such a find." She said, this is so important. Uh, this is Grant's. No one has ever seen this before. And you must frame this and keep this and share this with people. And uh, which I have done uh, since that time and it's been on loan to the Smithsonian and to other museums. This room is the pantry and was the pantry in the 1858 house. Behind me is a nice picture of, of Grant Wood uh, working on uh, one of his lithographs, colored lithographs, uh, 
wildflowers, tame flowers, fruits and vegetables. I think this is wildflowers. And it was taken of him as he was working on the lithographs in the kitchen. And he would have been working in front of the area that's now occupied by the stove. size and the configuration of the dining room is very much as it was in 1858 when the Oaks family lived here. The depression was on when Grant Wood moved in in 1935 and so he had to make use of all kinds of recyclable materials and one of the materials that he had been using in his artwork uh, was masonite. He used masonite in his oil paintings. He loved the way that masonite uh, would take the oil for his oil paintings. And his most famous oil paintings are on Masonite. And he was national spokesperson for Masonite when he lived here. And he also used uh, Masonite liberally uh, in his restoration of the house. It was a cheap product. And it was a long lasting product. One of the things that Grant Wood did when he moved here was to build himself a dining room table. And he designed the table that you see here went down to a, a shop or a store downtown in Iowa City and found these iron legs and welded the legs together and then painted them in the coloration that you see here. He then built about 11 and a half to 12 foot wooden tabletop, uh, which he covered then with masonite. Uh, he was very proud of that surface. It took varnish very well. It took oil painting very well. I took the wooden top off and stored it down in the cellar a few years ago and had this glass top made so that you can see through and see the beautiful legs of the table and you can see the chairs which Grant Wood also designed and he had these 12 chairs made out of the Amana colonies. An interesting thing, uh, the detail that you'll note um, are the, the little acorn that you'll see up at the top of each rail as well as the beautiful oak leaves and it's honoring once again uh, the Oaks family with the acorn and with the oak leaf. Then over my left shoulder is one of my favorite pieces. This is Mauricio Lasansky's very colorful, very beautiful uh, Indian chief with broken feathers. In the original house, the wall behind me would have had the doorway to my right and to my left, uh, there would have been another doorway. And this was the doorway from the back staircase into the dining room for the hired girl to use. Uh, when Grant Wood came, he took out the back stairway to make the kitchen a larger room. Uh, so the wall behind me then uh, became a wall that he used to build in uh, the sideboard. Uh, there's a beautiful design feature on the back of his. Uh, you see the stonework. Uh, which is in masonite, of course, and then he covered the wooden top of, of the sideboard with uh, masonite as well. Uh, the two prints over the sideboard are 1971 uh, Juan Moreau, uh, one of my favorite uh, artists. Uh, and I, I really like these uh, two pieces because they are so playful. They show children playing and, and it's got, uh, they both got great color as well. I've always really liked the design of the French doors in the dining room, and uh, these doors were designed and built by Grant Wood. Uh, then over to my left is a nice oil by Ray Carpenter, uh, who is a California painter, and uh, Ray Carpenter was painting what he calls China Camp. Behind me is a collection of, of white porcelain called Kaiser porcelain. I started the collection when I first moved into the house and it's grown to the size that you see behind me. In the original house, this display area was a, a window that looked out onto the back porch and I'm told by uh, Fay Oaks Cruz that her granddad, Nicholas Oaks, used to sit out on a chaise lounge out on the back porch and uh, he could talk through the window to people in the dining room. When Grant Wood came, uh, 
he made the downstairs parlor into his bedroom and he needed a bathroom. So he cut off a little bit of the porch, made that his bathroom area, I had to close this window, uh, but he didn't want to leave the window unused. So he made a display area and he did a beautiful job. He, he kept the arch, beautiful arch of the window. Uh, he used masonite. Uh, to cover the, the bottom ledge, the window ledge of the display area. And then he used uh, a masonite wainscoting in the back of the display area. And I painted that a dark brown, a chocolate brown, which I think makes the porcelain really pop. The west window of the dining room gives you a great opportunity uh, to see the construction of the windows of the house with the pulleys and rope system as well as the beautiful arching architecture of Nick Soaps. When Grant Wood was here, uh, he wanted to use shelving to highlight his glass collection. Uh, he designed and created this shelving system on the west window of the dining room. It's really quite beautiful. And it's the original glass that, that he installed in 1935. And he used masonite to make the notch uh, shelf holders, and you see up at the top uh, the beautifully designed scroll work or scalp work, such as you saw on the sideboard on the north wall of the dining room. Dr. Moore continued the use of uh, the shelving in this window for her display of glass, and then I've continued uh, the same use of the west window with a display of very functional uh, Waterford crystal ware. One especially nice piece of Waterford is on the top shelf. And this jug was specially made by the Waterford Company in Ireland uh, to commemorate uh, President John F. Kennedy. We're now in the living room of the house, uh, formerly called the sitting room when the Oaks family lived here. On the wall behind me, you see a abstract rendition of a flag uh, which was done by the local artist Dan Seeley. Uh, Dan and Shelley, his wife, have done quite a number of pieces for me. And you'll see Shelley's work on the uh, east wall of the billiards room when, when we get to that room. The fireplace wall in the living room in the original house would have had and still does have a built in uh, chimney. There were three built in chimneys in the house, one in the dining room. Uh, one in the parlor, now the billiards room, and one in this room. And again, he incorporated the arches of the arch windows, and he did the arching over the fireplace itself. Uh, he hand hammered a copper hood, uh, again, picking up the beautiful arching aspect of the design. He covered the uh, wall with his uh, signature uh, wainscoting made out of masonite. In this uh, corner of the living room, we see a lot of Grant Wood's handiwork in the way of his uh, design. Uh, starting with the window on the west uh, next to the fireplace, uh, Grant Wood uh, decided that he didn't want to have drapes and curtains on this window. Uh, so what he did was he designed and uh, built the shutters that you see on the window. And I've replicated these shutters in the uh, bedrooms and bathrooms upstairs. When the shutters are open, uh, the window is covered with a carefully uh, styled uh, set of rabbit wire uh, mesh that he put together. And at the bottom of the mesh that covered the panes of glass, uh, he had two pots that he planted with Boston ivy, and that ivy grew up in the rabbit wire all the way to the top of the window and covered the window for some privacy. It was also just a very beautiful uh, design feature. And you'll see this in some of the pictures of the house. And directly behind me is the beautiful bookcase that Grant Wood built into the living room. The edges of the shelf, I think, are really interesting because uh, Wood notched those shelves in his own design. And it really is an interesting and intriguing feature of the bookcase. To my left, uh, this nice little lamp was an oil lamp that Grant Wood converted to uh, electricity. And the original Grant Wood wiring is still 
attached in in the uh, little lamp and I make sure that it's safe uh, every year. But Wood designed and built uh, a chaise lounge and ottoman that sat about where I'm standing and this was his reading area. So he installed this nice little reading lamp to his uh, bookcase so it would be comfortable uh, for his reading. And uh, now let's step out on the little porch. The porch off the living room was original to the house. When Grant Wood uh, bought the house, uh, he screened in the porch and did the good work as he did on uh, the other porches. And you'll want to take a look at the detail of the ceiling, which is Grant Wood design. And he moved the doorway to the outside to give extra depth to this uh, entrance onto the porch. Uh, the painting on this wall of the living room is by Professor Ronald Cohen, who's on the faculty at the University of Iowa School of Art and Art History. And I've asked uh, Professor Cohen um, his thoughts on the, the titling of this picture. And, and the most he'll say is that he asks the viewer uh, to paint your own story into this picture. Uh, but needless to say, beautiful Venetian red oil on prepared paper and uh, really one of the favorite pieces in the house. And then just one more little item, uh, but a gift made to me I grew up in Cedar Rapids. Uh, this is the uh, self-portrait bust. Um, it's in bronze, done by Grant Wood uh, prior to his move to Iowa City. And the, the group in Cedar Rapids called the Garlic Society is a continuing tradition of a group that Grant Wood started called the Garlic Society, a supper club. And they came to Iowa City one night, had dinner at 1142. And as a gift for my uh, hosting the group, uh, they gilded one of the bronze uh, busts of Grant Wood, placed it on a piece of Stone City limestone, and gave that to me to keep in the house. The oil painting on this wall is called Changes, and it's a painting by a Polish artist uh, named Daniusz Kozicki. And I just love uh, this uh, painting, Changes, uh, the depth of color, uh, the movement in the painting itself. Uh, it's heaven and hell and sky and earth, and uh, it just, it moves a lot and it, it, I think it says a lot as well. Then in the mirror, uh, you'll see the reflection of Dan Selig's flag and an interesting aspect of the flag way on that wall is that the flag now occupies a place in this room where Parson Wing's fable hung uh, just before it was transferred by Grant Wood to its new owner. Uh, the white porcelain Kaiser Goshawk uh, sits on a plant stand in the front window of the living room. Uh, it's a really a favorite view of passersby, whether people are walking by on the street or whether they're driving by in their cars. And they often will remark, I like to drive by your house. I like to walk by your house. And I especially like to, to see the, uh, the white hawk in the front window. And so that's, that's really a nice feeling that, that people can enjoy uh, some of the artwork, uh, even from the street. This is the billiards room, and it has been the billiards room since I bought the house in 1975. In the original house, the room served as a special gathering place uh, for special guests and was akin to, I would suppose we'd call it our formal living room today. When Grant Wood moved into the house, uh, he converted the old parlor from the Oaks days into his sleeping quarters, into his bedroom. He discovered that there were no closets in the parlor and of course no closets in the house at all. So he built these closets behind me that are covered with uh, masonite. Interesting, the, the little grooving that you'll see that makes it appear uh, to be wainscoting uh, comes about at, from an invention of Grant Wood. He invented a, a little routing device 
that allowed him to make these nice smooth grooves in the masonite. Anyone trying to replicate that, I think, would have a real uh, hard time without tearing the masonite up. But the cupboards are kind of interesting. Uh, they open up and, and uh, a lot of storage on both sides. This is for storage of clothing up here. And these are shelves uh, for various kinds of storage. He also used this closet on this side uh, for containing his weights that he used uh, for workout. But he had weights on cables that hung up at each corner of the closet. And uh, then, of course, he could close the closet doors and, and uh, not uh, show the workout equipment. When we were in the billiards room, I mentioned that <clears throat> Grant Wood, in his restoration and remodeling of 1142, added this bathroom that we're standing in right now. Uh, he took about eight or nine feet off the existing screen porch that circles around the kitchen in the dining room of 1142, the original porch. Took about eight or nine feet and created this room, bathtub that you see here is the same bathtub that Grant Wood had. In addition, uh, as a decorative feature and probably a functional feature as well, uh, he used a masonite as he had in the uh, dining room and the living room uh, to create a, a wainscoting effect, but to look like tile uh, in the bathroom. He used the same routing tool that he had used to create the wainscoting uh, to create a, a tile feature. And it's gone through all those years of showers and, and use, and it's still in, in great condition. Uh, to my left is a cabinet that uh, Grant Wood built uh, for the bathroom. And of course, uh, masonite is used on the top and, and on the side. To my right, on the walls to your right, you'll see a nice uh, oil painting by Steve Erickson. And then on the adjoining wall, a very nice print by Leola Bergman. Uh, she was a writer and an artist, a, a wonderful printmaker. And you see one of her prints uh, on this wall. On the same wall, uh, a pair of sconce lights that Grant Wood installed. Uh, they're ceramic, uh, as are the, the doorknobs throughout the house. And uh, Grant used ceramic candles on the cupboard that, that he created in this room as well. People often comment on the blue walls in this room. These are a solid brick wall, 17 to 24 inches throughout the house. But in this room, uh, there's something special, and that's the burlap on the walls with many coats of glaze paint to give it a nice luster and nice shine. But the, the paint on burlap gives a special texture to the walls as well. And on my left, uh, a series of 15 wash paintings by a local artist, Shelley Seelick, each the pieces of a woman figure and the pieces collectively are called the figure. Here we have a mirror which was of the Grant Wood era. I retrieved the mirror from the cellar when I uh, moved into the house. The mirror had been up in that period of time that Grant Wood owned 1142 from uh, 1935 to 1942. This is one of 17 lithographs that he did for the Associated American Artists in 1939. The Associated American Artists commissioned him to do a number of lithographs. And uh, this one is um, in springtime or plowing in springtime. Uh, and it's a farmer standing there and it's called the Farmer Planting Fence Post, which shows the whimsy of, of Grant Wood. But he, he painted what he knew, he painted what he saw. And this is a nice example of Grant Wood's work. When we were on the uh, porch of the house off the kitchen, you'll remember uh, I discussed the nice table that Grant Wood had designed and built. And so just over my shoulder is this picture of Grant Wood and Carl Sandberg having lunch at the table on the porch. I always like to show this picture to those walking through the house because it sort of captures uh, his relationship with uh, other artists, literary performing, as well as uh, visual artists. When Nicholas Oakes built 1142, he harvested native black walnut to make 
furniture for the house, room 42, and to uh, build the beautiful uh, banister and staircase and dual post that we see here. In the uh, later years of the Oaks ownership, um, some of the descendants uh, removed the staircase and saved it in a carriage house in the old uh, horse barn in a hayloft. Uh, that probably was a good thing because the house was at some point turned into a boarding house, a rooming house, small apartments uh, later in the Depression. And uh, the staircase very well may have been saved because it had been taken out by that time. At any rate, when Grant Wood bought the house, one of the first things he did was to bring the staircase back from the hayloft, replace a couple of spindles, and put the beautiful old uh, black walnut staircase back in shape. The newel post was in perfect condition. Uh, here's a really special picture by Tomas Lasansky. Uh, it's a one of a kind. Uh, it's called American Dignity. And this is a monumental piece that I, I just love to walk down the stairs every day and see this piece. It has a lot of meaning. It's, uh, it's a, uh, just a, a very, very special piece in my collection. Nicholas and Mary Oaks had a large family. In 1858, there would have been a, a parent's bedroom, the nursery, the boy's bedroom, uh, and in this room, which was the girl's bedroom. The room was a bit larger uh, in 1858 because in 1900, the family decided to put the first bathroom in the house. And so uh, a portion of the room was sectioned off for the bathroom. When Graham Wood bought the house, he used this room as a room and office for his assistant, Park Bernard. And then when Dr. Moore moved in, this room became the room for her live-in maid. And now the room is a guest bedroom under my ownership. This uh, upper front bath or guest bathroom of the house uh, was the first uh, bathroom at 1142. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Oaks installed the bathroom in 1900. When uh, Grant Wood bought the house in 1935, he did a few things in the bathroom. He uh, designed and installed the cupboard here to my right. Uh, the original knobs are, are still on this cupboard. Uh, he raised the bathtub a few inches to give the illusion of a deeper bathtub. You may remember up at Five Turner Alley in Cedar Rapids that he did just the opposite. He lowered the bathtub into the floor. And again, in this room, as in the dining room and the living room and uh, other rooms, uh, masonite is used as uh, wainscoting in the room. We've now stepped into the sitting room of 1142. When Mr. Oakes designed the house, he designed this room as a master bedroom, and that's what the room was used for all the time that the Oakes family lived in the house. Grant Wood had lived in very small spaces ever since he moved into the city from uh, their farm place. And so when he moved here, uh, he converted the west part of the upstairs into an apartment for his mother, Hattie. So after Mrs. Wood died, uh, Grant Wood reached out and brought in other people. Uh, Eric Knight, the English author of The Last He Come Home Stories, lived here with his wife and child. And then when Mr. Knight left, uh, Grant Wood's uh, wife, uh, Sarah, had a son and daughter-in-law and child, and that family lived in this portion of the house. And this room, the sitting room, was their living room. Dr. Moore took this space back to the master bedroom space. But when I moved in and made this a sitting room, I uh, utilized the front two bedrooms on the east and the west uh, as guest rooms. And so the sitting room not only is a wonderfully relaxing and comfortable place for me uh, to enjoy my time, uh, but if I have guests, it, it allows great space for the guests as well and for their privacy and freedom in walking around through the house.
The painting behind me is a painting by James Clausen. Uh, his mom and dad, Marmy and Gene Clausen, lived in Iowa City. His dad was the voice of the Hawkeyes. Many people may remember Gino uh, out at uh, KXIC and announced many, many basketball and football games. We've seen uh, Tomas Lasansky's work in the hallway, American Dignity, that great, huge, powerful uh, figure. And another one of his pieces in the sitting room is, is Lincoln, which is uh, pencil, color pencil, and ink wash. I think it's really special the way Tomas expresses the feelings of what was happening uh, to President Lincoln. He starts out with the early part, see, everything's going along pretty well and then gets down to the disaster of the assassination and you see how he breaks up the the picture in that assassination picture then this is another of uh, Tomas's works sort of in the Lasansky gallery uh, it's a picture of a Native American brave called Long Neck but you can see the uh, the blood dripping down from his face and you know, onto his body uh, Thomas used a beautiful technique. He used a trowel to impart this to trowel on the uh, acrylic on the linen canvas. Very much uh, dominating uh, this room is this giant print by Mauricio Lasansky. It's called uh, Quetzalcoatl, and this is a color intaglio print which uh, Mauricio and his family considered to be his most important work. Before I bought this piece, uh, I found that I didn't have uh, much wall space uh, for a big piece like this. And in this room, I had a, a chest or a cabinet, a fine cabinet, which contained my television set and many, many books. And I had to find some way to adjust for that. And so what my contractors and I came up with was this. So behind Quetzalcoatl is my television set and space for uh, the books that I can't uh, store in other parts of the room. Uh, we're now in the uh, west bedroom of the house. In the original Oaks house, uh, this was a nursery. When Grant Wood moved into the house, this was her little bedroom. Then when Dr. Moore and her family moved in, this became Mariah's bedroom, her daughter. And then when I moved in, it, it stayed as a bedroom. We know that in the original house, uh, there were no closets. Uh, and that applied to this bedroom as well. Uh, when Grant Wood moved in in 1935, he built a, a small closet off this side of the room. And when Dr. Moore and her family moved in, they expanded the closet to this present side. We've now stepped into the master bedroom of the house. In the old Oaks house, this was the boys' bedroom. After the Oaks family moved on, and before Grant Wood bought the house, there was a brief period of time during the Depression, and the house became a boarding house or a rooming house. I'm told still owned by relatives of the Oaks family, but the house is divided up throughout the downstairs, the upstairs, and it's likely that, that these rooms were divided for renters or boarders uh, at that time. Bay Oaks crew still lived next door, and she recalled that in the back stairway, which she remembers uh, pigeons flying around uh, in the staircase at that time, and that there were windows out in the house. Needless to say, by the time uh, Graham Wood bought the house, uh, there was a lot of work to be done, and he spent the two years, 1935-1936, restoring the house. He set about to remodel the upstairs into an apartment for his mother Hattie and to make this into an apartment for her uh, he divided this room into two rooms and so the room to my left was a little bedroom and to my right um, was a, a little dining room for her and then we'll get into the hired girls room 
the mass murder path now, but what had been the dining room part for Mrs. Wood and for Eric Knight and his family, uh, that was also a studio for Grant Wood in 1939. And in fact, in this studio space, he painted Carson Weems' Fable, which is probably second only to his American Gothic uh, of, of Grant Wood's works. I know from talking to Faye Oaks Cruz, who was the last surviving granddaughter of Nicholas Oaks. She lived right next door, uh, just over the wall with uh, her father, John, and, uh, and her mother. And she sat in her bedroom and talked to Grant Wood as he painted Parsons' Fable uh, in this room. And she told me a really charming story about her nephew, John Oaks, who was the son of Perry Oaks, her uncle who lived adjacent to the John Oaks family. And John was playing with Grant Wood's uh, stepdaughter uh, up in this area one day and Grant Wood was painting the Parsons Fable. And Grant said, I'm gonna go downstairs and have lunch. You kids don't touch this painting because it's wet paint. So I'll be back. Well, as soon as he stepped out of the room, John went over, swiped his finger on the painting and Grant came back, saw this, got pretty angry, and uh, took John down by the ear and threw him out the front door. And not too long ago, in 2008, when we had the 150th birthday of the house, uh, John told that story about how he had done that finger swiping on the painting, and that he had later in 1981, when the Grant Wood exhibit went around the United States, he took all his friends and, and uh, uh, showed them the Parsons uh, Fable painting where he had done his handiwork. But at any rate, um, after uh, Grant Wood uh, left and, and Dr. Moore bought the house, uh, Dr. Moore kept the, kept the arrangement of the upstairs and of the house pretty much as it was when Grant Wood was here. And then after uh, Dr. Moore left and I bought the house from her, then I removed the wall that Grant Wood had placed. Uh, uh, he was thoughtful enough not to nail the wall down into the floor. But I removed the wall and, and took the room back to its original size. And it's now my master bedroom. Now here we have an Irish mule chest, uh, which is just a fancy term for a chest of drawers. Above the Irish mule chest, is a beautiful painting, Magnolia, or Magnolia Blossom, uh, by Lorraine Whalen. And Lorraine is married to my nephew, James Hayes, in Bray, Ireland. Uh, they have a little daughter, Elisa Avelina. Lorraine was born in Ireland, and her family lives in Ireland. They met, James and Lorraine met in uh, art school in Toronto, and then they moved back to, uh, uh, back to Ireland and live in the county of Kerry, and now I have moved very close to Dublin. Uh, this painting is called Composition Number One, Brilliant Traces. And this is a very nice painting by Dr. Uh, Webster Gelman, who is a well-known orthopedist in Iowa City. This particular painting, as Dr. Gelman mentioned to me uh, at the time I bought it, was a favorite of Dr. Gelman's wife, Gloria. I saw it at Dr. Gelman's showing uh, at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art in the 1990s, and I bought it shortly after that. We now walked into the, the master bathroom from the master bedroom, and in the original house, the Oaks house, uh, this space was referred to as hired girls room. Uh, she lived here and she had a private stairway or back stairway that went down into the kitchen. When Grant Wood bought the house, he converted the upstairs into an apartment, as we've talked about. And in making this space into apartment space, he erected a wall uh, which separated the room into a, a bathroom on the east and a kitchen area for his mother uh, on the west side. Uh, so he took the back stairway out, uh, thus allowing this room to become bigger and, and for the kitchen to become bigger. When Dr. Moore bought the house in, in 1942, uh, she kept the bathroom on the east and she removed the kitchen 
and turn the west side of this room into a, a really nice bunk bedroom for her son, Tom. Then in 1993, as a part of my idea of how the house should look, the vision for the house, I wanted to get back to the footprint of the, uh, of the Oaks house. And so I removed the wall that Grant Wood had put up in this uh, room. And I took the room back to its original size. Of course, the back stairway still wasn't here. So I maintained that closet space. Behind me is a, an oil painting by James Lachey, who was on the faculty at the University of Iowa School of Art and Art District. We're now in the final room at 1142, the sleeping porch. The sleeping porch uh, was not here during the Oaks years, but rather Grant Wood built this uh, space uh, when he moved in. He had taken the stairway out of the our girls' room and out of the kitchen, and, and he added a, a stairway off the north end of the sleeping porch. Grant Wood designed the beautiful uh, grid work and screening that you see on the sleeping porch. The sleeping porch has a copper roof, uh, as does the sleeping porch off the living room and the conservatory as well. Uh, this is the door that Grant Wood would have designed and built on the sleeping porch in 1935. And you can see uh, the painted area, which exposes the um, area of the handrail that went down on the porch. And under the stairway, he stored many of his painting materials, his easels, his uh, stones that he used for his lithography. When I decided to put the conservatory on, it was really a difficult decision, really kind of bittersweet because I was giving up, uh, consciously giving up uh, something that Grant Wood had designed and had built himself. But at the same time, um, we were making a really beautiful addition to 1142. Thank you for visiting and touring 1142. I hope that as you have walked the grounds and have visited the rooms in 1142, uh, that you will come to remember uh, this wonderful pioneer house uh, for its architecture, its history, and that you will come to love 1142 as much as I have and the other owners of this uh, great historic building. And now thanks again for coming and goodbye. Well, thank you. Hope you hopefully you enjoyed that as much as um, as I did. And I've seen it a couple of times. And each time I see it, I, I I pick up on something else. So very, very pleased um, uh, to be able to share that with you today. We are fortunate to have um, Jim Hayes with us today. Um, before I turn open it up for questions, um, let me just do a brief introduction uh, of Jim. Uh, James P. Hayes is an attorney who lives and works in Iowa City, Iowa. Raised on a farm near Forest City, Iowa, he graduated from Loris College in Dubuque, Iowa, and then from the University of Iowa College of Law. His first job out of law school was Iowa Deputy Commissioner of Public Safety, and then as the first director of the Iowa Crime Commission. He was a candidate for state attorney general, and then began trial practice with Mearden Law Firm in Iowa City. He formed his own law, for, law firm with Kate, Karen Lorenzen uh, in 1999, and they have grown uh, to four lawyers. They are a statewide practice, which handles a wide range of personal injury cases involving medical neglect, vehicular accidents, fires, industrial accidents, product failures of any kind uh, of cases where people were badly injured, such as brain injuries and major physical disabilities. This includes college athletes, um, who sustained brain concussions uh, many years ago uh, while in college. 
Aside from his illustrious professional career, Jim has been an active member of the Iowa City community and a significant philanthropist. His love of Grant Wood and the home Wood lived and worked in from 1935 until his death in 1942 prompted him to not only buy the property, but also several adjacent properties, thus forming the Grant Wood Art Colony, which continues to foster creativity uh, in the region through a series of artistic residencies. Uh, so welcome, Jim. Uh, if you uh, want to unmute yourself, and uh, if anyone has a question for Jim, I'm sure he would be uh, happy to, to try and answer some of those questions. Um, ha having now lived and uh, been in the home for 40 years? Oh, you're still muted. How about that? Perfect, perfect, thank you. Yes, so, uh, yeah, it's 1975, so um, many years, what, 46 years? Is that right? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Must be, must be, yeah, very, very close. So, so it, it was interesting. Um, brings back a lot of memories. To, that time I've seen the the tour uh, since it was uh, edited. So it was kind of fun putting it together, and and I liked it to see the junction with the documentary itself on the house. It's kind of interesting, but uh, yes, yeah, a great place. Um, I learned. They knew almost every day, uh, having your that many years. But it's a great house. I think Grant Wood really, um, really enjoyed it and made it into his own personal retreat when when he lived here, worked at the university. Hello. Yep, I can hear you. Oh, we're still there. Yep, yep, yep. We're here. We're here. We're here. All right. So, if uh, does anyone have questions um, for for Jim? Uh, sure. Um, hey, Jim. It's Kristen here. If you can hear me. Uh, yes. Up, up the street. So, um, the the white pine eventually met its demise. Is that correct? That was in yeah. the film. Yes. The and, white pine. And remind me of, I mean, I know a lot of people mourned that um, it was the, the, when that had to come down and um, visited it, it was almost, there was a lot of traffic down the street of people saying their goodbyes, um, you know, as we've seen more recently with the derecho, but what was, what, did it ultimately get a lightning strike? Well, the, what, thanks for the, what happened was the, the pine uh, had been struck by lightning about 50 years before its demise. And we knew that it had incurred damage at that time. And so we put the light right up to uh, reduce the risk of further strikes, but it looked beautiful from the outside. Uh, but the, the time that, that we knew it had to come down, uh, one of the huge branches, sun, uh, branch uh, fell and there was my wonderful neighbor's uh, son's bedroom and crashing down. So we knew that it, it had to be carefully investigated. So after a lot of drilling, um, we found that it was rotten way to the core of the tree. And so Leon Livers sadly uh, had to take the tree down. But it was just a, as you know, Chris, it was just a magnificent specimen and and a real neighborhood uh, monument and there were an, uh, there are several others throughout the neighborhood one of which i know was lost in the derecho others that remain but um you know I, i've always enjoyed uh seeing i really enjoyed the program to see to be reminded of some of the details i've seen before and to learn some new things i've always loved that fence i did not realize that he had designed the fence um, right. And those euonymus, which I'm always curious what type of euonymus they are, the way they're um, trained is just gorgeous. Um, but the care of the landscaping, as well as all of the house, um, it's it's like a living thing. So thank you for all your um, hard work. It's it's a lot of work, I know, to, to try to keep that all going. As you know, Kristen, we've added one more house to the 
Brentwood Art Colony now, the steel home right next door, uh, two eleven forty two. So that's going to be uh, that makes it five now. Five houses mm -hmm. in the Art Colony. And uh, I always refer to myself as the other brick house on Court Street. Uh, but not that brick house, not, not the magnificent one. Um, I will, one uh, very um, just interesting little tidbit is that my husband's aunt was a student of Grant Woods um, back in the 30s. She won the um, contest at the University of Iowa to design the homecoming badge in 1935. Um, her name was Loretta Rummelhart. It became Loretta Cantor. She she lived just a few blocks away. And um, when my husband's mother passed recently, we inherited um, a regionalist painting she did um, much in the style of um, you know, her mentor um, with my husband's grandfather in it. So, and I love that I can look down the road and see um, you know, where Grant Wood lived. Um, it's just beautiful, so thank you. You're welcome. Jim, we got a question in the chat, um, which I'll share with you. Um, when Nan Wood Graham visited the house, was she given a tour of the whole house? And did you keep up um, correspondence with her after her visit? Uh, yes, uh, she toured the, the whole house and the carriage house or the barn. And we had a wonderful time. She was here uh, two times. 76 and I think maybe 77, Sean. Um, and so she toured the whole house and uh, it had great remembrances uh, as, she, as she went through. Uh, but she was a very, very interesting person. And I stayed in touch with her almost to her death. Um, but she was really a very funny lady. And I remember when, when she came, she, she like to wear, I call them Dallas Cowboy cheerleader and leather boots or whatever, you know, the, the cheerleader boots. And uh, and she had a, wore a wig all the time. And, but she was just, just a delightful smile and just a delightful person. She When she came to Iowa City, she, she stayed with her friend, and uh, they were dear friends from, from back during that period of time. But... Uh, it was always fun. Uh, Eddie Green and uh, Park Reinard would, in the summertime, each summer, they they get together with Grant's uh, former students when the um, Stone City uh, Summer Festival occurred. And so I'd have a little cocktail party here for the for the former students. And when Nan was here, she would 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 join in. Very nice lady, though. Great. Does anyone else have any questions? Just feel free to unmute yourself. Hello. Yes, Char? Yes, yes. I just, I have a comment for Jim. Uh, I, I just want, are you getting the echo here? Yes, yes, lots of echo, yes. Sorry about that. Now, can you hear me? Much better, okay. thank you. I just wanted to, to thank Jim for everything he's done. Uh, I've been a Grantwood fan since I was a little girl, I think, and uh, brought my family to Iowa City to see the outside of the Grantwood home must have been back in the early 70s because my children were quite young at that time. They both went on to graduate from the University of Iowa. Um, and it, uh, I was invited to the uh, Iowa Award during Governor Culver's time and oh. I got to be at the house and I was just absolutely thrilled. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you for everything you've done to honor Grant's um, talent and uh, everything about him. I can't imagine what it was, what it has been like for you living in that wonderful home all these years. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so uh, thrilled to hear about all the things that you're doing to uh, keep his um, name alive. And uh, just wanted to say thank you. Well, you're very welcome. You know, uh, the house is, as you say, is just a wonderful place. 
and I've given many, many uh, tours and, and uh, we've had a lot of parties here and people enjoyed it. But now that we've had the, the uh, Grantwood Art Colony in force, you know, it's, it's, we're in, a, in our 12th year now of the Grantwood Art Colony. And we've had 30 fellows go through the, through the colony uh, with their fellowships. And it's, and it's really um, a great source of excitement and pride to know that, that these fellows are not only absorbing Grant Wood as they live here and do their art here at the university and at the county campus, but they're taking Grant Wood out across the United States and, and internationally. This, for instance, this year we have um, one of the fellows, a holdover fellow, is she's an architect artist from, from Russia. And last year, our theater performing arts person uh, was from Bulgaria. We've had people from Japan. We've had fellows from Turkey and LA, New York, Chicago, all across the land. And they just really love know, getting to know Grant Wood and knowing what he has given the art world. And uh, that's a great source of pride. And I, what I was intending to convey is that it's not only the house anymore, it's the Grantwood Art Colony uh, that stirs up such excitement. I had the, um, one of the Board of Regent people here, well, several have been here, but, but Patty County was here a couple of years ago and I showed her uh, the colony after we toured the house and, and she said, oh my gosh, Jim, this is the best kept secret in Iowa. Yes. Well, we're trying, we're trying to erase that problem. We, we want it not to be the best kept secret anymore, you know? So, but it really has been great. You know, it's, it's, I think Wood would love that, you know, it's the excitement of movement and doing things and talking together and sharing ideas and, you know, and that's what this whole thing is meant to do. So. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And I, back in the 90s, um, I got to interview Tom Savage. And I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he was one of two farmer artists who worked at the Stone City Art Colony. Oh. And he painted with Grant on the Iowa State murals. And he was a Fort Dodger. And oh. I, I got to interview him before he passed and wrote an article that the Des Moines Register printed about him. So that, and I heard from a lot of people and I worked at the Blandon Art Museum in Fort Dodge at the time. And so uh, we did a, a exhibition of Tom Savage's work there. And uh -huh. at, at the time, um, Senator, then Senator Culver came uh, promoting his book uh, so it was uh, just a wonderful experience to actually talk to someone who worked with Grant and um, yeah, it was great. So I just want to thank you for, um, I, I just want to thank you for everything you've done. Very welcome. Nice to talk to you. Jim, we have another um, uh, question in the chat. What would you cite as a favorite memory or two of living in a house where Grant Wood lived? You know, one of one of the nicest memories I have is of his um, close friends, uh, Park Reinard and Ed Green, and of course that would include Nan. Uh, those are great memories, um, and those are early early on memories. Uh, and unfortunately, they're all gone now. Uh, but they gave they were such resources to me to learn more about the house and, and Grant Wood and what he meant to the house and what the house meant to him. And so those, those, are, those are great memories. Thank you, thank you. Someone asked um, about how they might be able to find out more about the openings of shows of the artists who are involved in the colony. I believe the colony has its own website. Is that correct, Jim? Right, yes. And that's, and I was going to encourage 
it's easily accessed in our county. And uh, Maura, our director, Maura Pilcher is our director and well-trained. She, you know, art history from Notre Dame and she trained at the Art Institute of Chicago, worked in the Field Museum, Bruce Moore, before she came here. And she's a wonderful director and she keeps the, the website well updated with our current fellows. And, um, and you can learn about our, our old fellows as well, but I, all, of the, all of the programming uh, is noted on the website. Each of the fellows, let me just tell, say a little bit about the fellowship. Um, we have three fellows currently, I have room for seven fellows in the county houses. Uh, we have we have financing for three fellows right now. We always have a painter, we always have a printmaker, and we have one performing artist, rotating music, theater, uh, dance. Uh, and so uh, the, the fellows have they're a one year fellowship. Uh, they have nice stipends. They have their housing provided. They can bring their families, which is at first in the, among fellowships in America. Uh, they have an academic appointment, which is very, very uh, wonderful for them. They teach one class per semester and they do their art the rest of the time. The fellows go statewide at request or we, we have various things happening statewide um, but they're here for a year and, um, it has really, um, it's really, I believe changed feeling in the culture, in the school of art and art history and in the art world at the university of Iowa, new ideas. They get ideas from the established folks here. And it's really been great for the university, but, that you know, they, and they have two exhibits, and those would be announced on the website as well. And we've been, as you know, Sean, we've had wonderful connection with uh, CSPS in Cedar Rapids, where we haven't had gallery space here because of the flooding. Next year, we will finally have uh, gallery space at the university for our fellows. So it's going to be great. But it's, it's been wonderful too. Yes, they have had in the past shows at CSPS. Uh, yes. I don't know if that's every year, but but certainly I've seen those. Yeah. Um, and right. uh, I echo your praise of, of Maura. Um, she's always very, very good about making sure that the fellows get up here to the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art, see our collection of Grant Wood's works and journey over to the Grant Wood studio, um, which is where he lived before he lived in your house. Um, so between the Grantwood studio and, and, your, uh, and your house, we can well document what, uh, where he lived and how he modified the spaces in which he lived from 1924 when he moved into the studio until 1942 when he died, when he was, was living in your home. So um, it's a very long span and it's very unusual to have such a documentation uh, of an artist transforming two living and working spaces. Um, and both are now well-preserved and will be around for years and years and years to come. Um, and and uh, wish that we had space around our studio to create that kind of uh, wonderful artistic uh, creative force that you've got going in the art colony. So I'm glad that you were able to do it. I'm glad that we have that uh, that resource for uh, for the future. Um, another question popped up in in the chat. Um, thanking you, of course, um, uh, for all that you're doing in, in this program. Asking, how did you first get interested in Grant Wood, and does the Chase Lounge that Grant designed still exist? Uh, I know of at least one of the Chase lounges uh, that he created does exist with. Uh, James Dennis, the art historian at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, there may be others, but that's that's one that I know about. Um, you know, I had heard about and knew of Grant Wood some um, going back to to my early schooling. Grant Wood was, you know, that that. He was a new person on the block, you know, when I was 
in junior high and that sort of thing. But at any rate, I, you know, of course I knew about it when I came to Iowa City. But then I learned so much from Dr. Moore when, when I lived in the carriage house for those three years. She, Dr. Moore kept the house very much as Grant Wood had had it when he lived here. I learned from her. And then I, I learned so much more from Eddie Green and Nan, and as I said, and uh, Park Reinhardt. And then I really started taking off uh, researching more and getting to more about uh, who he was and, and what he did. So, and that's been very nice. And by the way, Sean, you have been wonderful to us. You've been great to the Grantwood Art Colony, so helpful. And it's great to have your cooperation. Well, thank you. It, it is our pleasure. We're, we're as enthusiastic about Grantwood as you are. So it makes sense that, that we that we pool our efforts and, and for, this, for this common cause. So. Uh, I don't see any other questions popping up. Uh, oh, here, one just did. There you go. Uh, Lori asks, um, have you or would you consider writing a book about the history of this house? I think you have the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, I think that what, we, what we've done is um, we have the documentary, which accompanies the, the this little film, the tour. And the documentary, yes, the documentary covers all four owners of the house and in much more detail and in great uh, historical form. So that's that's been done really very nicely. And you also created a book on 1142, if I remember correctly. Oh, yes. The, yeah, the university uh, published a book and that's uh, still available at the at Prairie Lights. Uh, it, it really is a very nice book. I get so many compliments on that. It's, yep. R Richard King was the author of that book, and he's from West Branch. Very nice man, and uh, did a beautiful job with the book. Any other questions? Well, if not, I would like to just thank you all for your time. Thank you, Jim, for joining us and for answering uh, individual people's questions. Um, I think it was a delight to share um, your personalized tour of 1142 uh, with everyone. So hopefully everyone has been to or will plan in the, in the near future to come by and see the Grant Wood Studio up here in Cedar Rapids, uh, now having seen where he went to uh, after he left the studio. Um, in, in 1935. So um, please join us in two weeks as we do another program on Grant Wood. Um, uh, this one will be uh, presented by Deba Leach, uh, who is a, a, a Grant Wood um, enthusiast and scholar. Uh, and she will be doing, uh, it'll be on Sunday, same time, uh, two weeks from now uh, at 2 p.m. Uh, and she will be taking a different look um, at Grant Wood. And, and we welcome you all uh, back to join us uh, at that point. Uh, otherwise, thank you, Jim. Thank you all for uh, participating and, uh, and we hope to see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.